Hi, everyone. So my name is Hassan Bhatti, as Alex mentioned. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about some of the lessons I've learned working in deep tech. So I grew up in Pakistan, as Alex mentioned, came to Canada in 2010, did a degree in applied physics and economics, and since then have been working in deep tech. Kind of went too deep into deep tech, I think so. So the first company I worked at was Iris Automation, and we were building computer vision sensors for industrial drones, because you wanted to like, enable them to fly beyond which line of sight. So two big issues in the drone industry are that, one, drones don't have like, long battery life. I have no idea about how batteries work right now, so we didn't really pick that problem. Second issue was building efficient and cheap sensors. We knew something about computer vision, and we knew something about sensors, so we went around and talked to all the drone companies in the world, and we found that, hey, this is a big problem. But one thing we missed out was, what are the external factors about building a product in a regulated industry, which is aviation? We didn't talk to FAA, we didn't talk to the lobby groups, and aviation is a very highly regulated industry, and there's a big lobby groups. So, though we had a great customer market, people wanted to buy our product, but the market product was unable to distribute in a mass market fashion because the FAA won't approve it or the Canadian Aviation Authority won't approve it. So the first lesson I learned is, if you work in a regulated industry, let's say healthcare, financial services, aviation, definitely understand the external factors, understand the regulations. They are as big of a factor in your product as your customers are. Next thing I worked on was building the world's first quantum machine learning incubator. For some reason, CDL decided in 2017 they wanted to invest a few million dollars in quantum companies, and they hired me. I had no idea about quantum. I did a degree in physics. That's pretty much it. But we got an opportunity to invest in 25 companies from, and find academics and PhDs from all across the globe. We brought almost 60 PhDs from North America, Europe, Asia, to Toronto, and helped them fund, build uh, deep tech quantum companies. But one of the biggest lessons I learned investing in these companies and helping them scale was that emphasizing on the solution is critical. A lot of these people were coming from an academic background, so they really love technology and they geeked out about it. But they, didn't, they missed the point that at the end of the day, the customers don't really care how your product works. What they care about is that can you solve the problem and can you communicate the value proposition to them. So that's critical in a deep tech space as well. If you look at SaaS companies such as Salesforce or any other company in Toronto like Nudge.ai, et cetera, they do a really great job on their marketing. They do a great job on like branding videos, animation videos, content. A lot of deep tech companies don't do that uh, a lot right now, but like there are a lot of companies like CryptoNumerics, which are popping up, which are doing a great job on their marketing now. Deep Genomics, Atomwise, which are CDL companies, have done an amazing job around uh, emphasizing on the solution over technology. And that's critical if you want to build a company in the deep tech space. You want to communicate your value proposition to your customers. You want to make sure that your customers understand how you are solving the problem, not exactly focusing on the technology. And from the quantum machine learning incubator, all the companies which emphasized on that, they were able to raise money. They were able to also get contracts. And the companies which did not, they failed. So the next company which I work at right now is called CryptoNumerics. We live in a data-driven world. But a lot of times, most of this data is inaccessible to customers right now or companies. The reason the data is inaccessible to people is because of IP and privacy issues. And that's what CryptoNumerics is helping solve. We are enabling companies to break through the data barrier and access this inaccessible data while making sure the privacy and IP is protected. Over the last one year, I've had an amazing opportunity to learn from amazing co-founders, as well as like, work with a lot of enterprise customers. And two key things I've learned working there is that you really need to iterate quickly and really listen to your customers. When we started off, we only had one product in our uh, toolkit, which was uh, enabling customers to be able to like, train machine learning models without co-locating data, which means you can have a data set in Toronto, in London, New York. I can train a machine learning model across that without ever needing to co-locate the data. So the data is protected. But as you talk to customers, what we realized was they wanted us to help them with the whole data analytics pipeline from the start, so acquisition, storage, cleaning, not just like the insights part. And we took that feedback, we went back, and we built solutions for that. And we came back to the customers and we said, hey, this is how we can make your data analytics pipeline privacy protected, and this is how we can help you. And that allowed us to move a lot of our customers to our sales pipeline. So it's very critical to hear the feedback and come back with answers uh, for the customers. And the second thing is delivering 10x advantage. Selling deep tech is one of the hardest thing. I, I didn't imagine that when I got into crypto numerics. One of the biggest challenges for my life in 2018 has been convincing a Fortune 500 company to pay me more than six, more than hundred thousand dollars for a software they don't really have an idea about. I'm telling them, which has no benchmark, nothing pre-exists for them. It's really hard. I cannot emphasize on that point. The only way you can convince 
Fortune 500 companies to buy a product from you, which they are going to spend a lot of time understanding, a lot of money buying, if you understand the industry very well. One of the biggest benefits at Crypto Numerics and RSO Automation we had was we spent a lot of years understanding these industries. And that's the only reason how we can deliver 10x advantage. So if you want to build a deep tech company, coming back to everyone here, if you don't get into deep tech, definitely think about the industry you spend time in or your friends have spent time in. Don't try to go into an industry just randomly, which you thought is like really cool, like, hey, I'm going to build a healthcare company because healthcare AI sounds cool right now. But if you have knowledge about that, then really spend time on that. So thank you so much for listening to me. This is our Crypto Numerics team. We are growing and we are hiring aggressively. So come talk to me or my co-founder, Roberto, who just sitting there on the corner. And yeah, if you want to talk about deep tech, quantum, drones, decentralized machine learning, data privacy, there's my email. Feel free to send an email to me. Thank you so much. Yes. Questions? Hassan, hold the mic. We're going to get questions. Oh, OK. I'll take advantage while we wait for the first question. So if you're in deep tech, I guess what you define as quantum AI, machine learning, um, you said that it's very hard to explain the value. So then how do you prove, how do you prove it's 10 times as valuable if they don't even know where to start? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really great question. So I think it's like an iterative process. So for example, giving a real example of a financial services company which is signed up, what we needed to do was we really need to understand their whole current process pipeline and understand like where actually the PL stood and how they were generating, like, let's say, $10 million for the current process. And how can we increase, let's say, by 10%, 20%, 50%, 100%. And what was like, the key factor we needed to pull and push? Once we understood that, then we can go back to the customer and say, hey, if you do X, Y, Z, you can change your $10 million revenue to $50 million revenue. And unless the customer sees revenue, no one cares how you can solve the problem. So like, it's really about the revenue at the end of the day. So you really need to understand how you can help them like, get the revenue up. Um, hi, uh, so I'm looking for data science opportunities. I'm wondering what you're looking for when hiring data scientists. Yeah, we are hiring data scientists to come talk to us afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Hassan. My name is Asif, right here on the other side. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, did crypto numerics improve your batting averages? No, it, <laughs> okay. it didn't improve my batting averages at all. I, I wish, like, but I used to open for Pakistan under 15 when I was growing up. Uh, I'll, I'll ask one follow-up question. Harder being a cricket player or a founder? A cricket player. <laughs> Thank you.